hello, uh, my name is Gaston Alonso. I'm a PhD student at the Balsero Institute in Argentina. Uh, I'll show you a, a custom function we did to solve some bone growth and remodeling problems. A bit of a context for this is that we work with metals physics in, in material science, and we are studying uh, some titanium alloys which have a pseudoelastic behavior. This behavior is a bit different from the no metals we are used to, to use. <laughs> In the sense, they have a pseudo-elastic behavior. They can be deformed for about 10% of deformation reversibly. This principle has been used in medicine for many things, uh, and I think the most known one is in brackets. Here, we use a wire of a nickel-titanium alloy to apply an effort on a deviated teeth uh, that can be sustained until the the deformation, the deviation is corrected. Our idea was to use it as in the same way to correct some growth pathologies, which can happen in the knees particularly. Uh, also, the mechanism is a, a bit different. For these cases, growth occurs in a cartilaginous zone, which is located, I don't know if you can see the pointer here, but there is a cartilaginous zone in the extremities of the long bones that grows and ossifies at the same time, and this gives rise to the, an increasing length of bones. When this growth is not uniform, there are several deviations that may appear that can be treated with a mechanical effort, typically an orthotic device. So we do know this effort could correct a deformation, but, but we do not know which magnitude, magnitude they have to have. So what we wanted to do was to compute somehow the effort we needed to apply with an orthotic device in order to correct these kind of deformations. Of course, this would, will, not be, will not be a deterministic uh, computation, but for engineering purposes, we wanted to have an estimation of the force we needed. So to understand this, this we have to know there are two mechanisms that determine the shape of the long bones. The first one is longitudinal growth, and this is the one that, ha that happens on this cartilaginous region I told before. Here, there are cells that grow and ossify at, the same, uh, uh, at a given rate, and this increases the bone length. There is a second mechanism, which is bone remodeling, which is, this mechanism is, is a bit different. This, this mechanism is caused by a couple of sp specialized cells which walk in the bone structure, depositing or removing calcium phosphate from the bone. And this increases the, the thickness of the bone and changes its local density. There are several differences between these processes, but essentially a few highlights are the first one that longit longitudinal growth stops at late adolescence. So at a given point in life, there, is, there are no more cells to grow here in the artificial plate because they are all ossified. All ossified. Bone remodeling happens during the whole life. These two mechanisms depend on multiple and stochastic fa factors. So we cannot deterministically compute them. Although we can have a good estimate, we cannot predict for a particular person, person the, a given output. And, but both mechanisms are mediated uh, through mechanical loads. They have different speeds, and this is important because longitudinal growth happens at about a millimeter by month, whilst remodeling happens in the or changing the bone geometry in the order of micrometers by month. For this reason, longitudinal growth is a moving boundary problem uh, when we implement it, and remodeling is a fixed domain problem. Essentially, any problem of this kind can be uh, posed uh, after the follow following formulation. We have a domain which represents the bone. It's partitioned between a bony, a epiphyseal plate, for example. Sometimes there is an orthotic device and a, a set of mechanical loads acting on the bone and modifying the biological mechanisms behind, behind bone growth. Essentially, we have 
two state functions which de describe the age of the cells that are growing in the sense that a cell, a newborn cell, cell has a value of zero and a ossif ossified cell has a value of one and a density distribution which describes the tissue density in the bony tissue. These variables act, can change the growth output and there are several phenomenological equations that need to be known in order to model this problem. Essentially, we need to know how the mechanical properties depend on density and maturity, how this maturity changes in response to applied stress, how growth responds in apply, in, 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 uh, to, apply, to changes in applied stress. This growth is a tensor, it's almost like a creep tensor Essentially, it gives us a growth rate for the epiphyseal plate. We have to know a remodeling rate, which represents how stresses affect the rate at which a calcium phosphate is deposited or removed from the bone. And several other empirical relations that relate this apposition rate with changes in density. Finally, to completely define the problem, we need to have a set of initial conditions. I won't go in detail because of recent times, but of time reasons. But what we found is that although there is quite a bunch of literature on this on this topic, there we authors tend to publish results but validated code we we need we could trust to to perform these calculations. For this reason we chose Castem and we did it we did a, a, we implemented a new algorithm for, for solving these problems. Uh, and we pub published the function and all the validation cases and some examples. So this is available for anyone which, which, who faces the, the same issues. Essentially, this is a highly customizable code. We published, as I said, several implementation examples that you can see, I show some here. We did some significant improve, improvements in the growth al algorithm. I don't have time to explain it in detail, but we achieved uh, computing cost reductions in the order of 10 to 20 times uh, as compared with other algorithms. Uh, and this, and I want to emphasize this, we did it to, to be able to optimize orthopedic device, devices from an engineering standpoint. Point. So we are not quite interested in the precise biology behind growth, but we want to have a, a good notion of what will happen with a particular device. So as I formulated it, it, it is a general problem. We chose a set of well accepted uh, re, uh, remodeling and bone growth equations. I won't go through this here, but uh, we chose a the oldest and more precise models we could find in order to have a well-validated base. So essentially how we solved the problem, it, uh, we are interested in modeling a process that uh, happens in time. There is no other way, way that having an incremental steps time, uh, algorithm. There are several points here, but I just wanna, wanna mention in uh, that we have specific functions that can be modified by the user quite easily in order to change the phenomenological equations that are used. Although the problem is formulated in general, we can change particular details of the, of the modeling. Uh, the algorithm, basically what it does, I, I don't have enough time, but it, uh, the notion behind a modeling growth is that nodes in the mesh follow the points in space having the same maturity they have when the simulation began. So on this way, uh, we can model the moving boundary problem. Uh, again, I won't go, go through this uh, point by point, but uh, we can do the remeshing with the algorithm in order to keep the mesh quality. And when we, we don't have any uh, growth happening, 
this algorithm reduces to the well accepted and commonly used algorithm for remodeling problems. So a bit of the implementation in Castem, it's quite the same as Passapass in some sense, because we have a function that receives a table in which we incorporate all the problem data. For example, we, we have a mesh representing the bone. We have to define a table with the loading conditions. We have to define the initial conditions as the density, initial density distribution. We have to uh, uh, give a, a list of times for which we want to compute growth and many other variables that I don't have time, but this is documented. So if you are interested and you download this, this package, you can see all the possibilities. And in response, we obtain a new index on this table which has all the quantities of interest we, we typically want. As time, the density distribution at a given time, material properties at a given time, the stress at a given time, etc. Well, this is all documented and this is the output we wanted because uh, we want to have something we can trust. I say it again. So we have documented it in order to be able to track results and rep reproduce results. Uh, well, this was validated. I won't go, go through these cases point by point, but essentially uh, we computed several cases for which we can obtain analytical solutions or for which there are some publications uh, in the literature. Uh, for example, here you can see, I don't know, again, I don't know if you see the pointer, but, but here, in the left top, you can see that the algorithm allows us to, to model for this simple bone, let's say. We have the red part representing bony tissue, the yellow part representing the epiphyseal plate, this cartilaginous tissue that grow, grows. And we can compute how this elementary bone grows uh, when no lo loads are applied. The algorithm in on this case solves the problem exactly. So here you can see what this is about. We have this yellow part that grows, but at the same time it ossifies. So the ossified part uh, size increases. Well, let's go to the perhaps more fun cases. Uh, we implement, we wanted to solve some practical interest cases. This is as I said, from an engineering standpoint. So in general, we use Castem uh, as a solver and post-processing tool, uh, but geometries are perhaps the, the output of, a, of an MRI. So we have very complex geometries. For this, we, we use Salome mesh uh, to, to generate the meshes. Uh, and in some cases, we use Blender to, to get images in post-processing. Uh, I showed you four examples that I think uh, are show well all the capabilities of, the, of this function. I I'll begin with an amyepiphysiolysis treatment. Uh, we'll, I show you how to integrate biomechanical data into this software, how we use it to compute uh, the effect of an orthotic device, and how we can use it to compute um, a classical um, problem in bone remodeling, which is stress shielding. I will go through this step by step. Let's begin by this one, which is a hemi epiphysiolysis treatment. This treatment consists in when there is an asymmetrical growth in bone, a, a surgeon can insert a few staples in, in the side of the epiphyseal plate that is growing the fastest. So this restraints growth on this, on this region and an angular deviation is produced in the bone. So that way the surgeon can correct a bone by growth pathology. We, uh, let's focus to begin with on a 2D, 2D model of this. This, is, this image in the left represents the, the distal portion of the femur. We will focus in the medial plane of this uh, of this bone, and this is what, what I'm showing you here. Uh, essentially, under the problem formulation, we have 
a part in blue here, which represents bony tissue, a red part representing the artificial plate. This is the part that grows. And an orthotic device, with uh, a prosthetic, which is the, 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 the staple. This typically is a titanium step, a staple. On these, there are, on top of this, there are several loading conditions acting on the bone. Um, these loading conditions could be loadings due to walking, etc., uh, that have to be defined. This is published, so you can access it if you want. Here you can see, for example, the output of the software. You'll see remeshing happening here, but we can compute how this bone will grow in response to the treatment. Here you see growth is restrained under the staple and an angular deviation occurs. We can compute the density distribution in the bone, which is illustrated on this figure in the right in the, and in the top. This density distribution also comprises changes in the thickness of the, of the bone, which are indicated here as A. These changes are much smaller than, than the growth induced uh, changes, which are indicated as C. We could also obtain the stresses induced in the bone and in the device, which are the ones we are interested in. And that's shown in, in this bottom line. So a more complex problem is to integrate biomechanical data into this software, because we have to compute the efforts on the knee due, for example, to, a, to walking. In this case, you'll see we have solved the contact problem of the knee when different loads due to several muscles act on the, on the joint. This, the solution of this pro problem is a stress distri distribution that we can use as an input to compute growth. So now, after having computed this, we can insulate, uh, isolate the, the femur from the model apply our software and compute, for example, the density distribution and the growth pattern in the artificial plate. As you can see here, there is a, an, a loading is no, not symmetrical. So there is an increase in the density of the bone on this side of the, of the femur. On the contrary, as loading is not symmetrical, we have, if you see here, I don't know if you understand what you are looking at, but this, is the, the epiphyseal plate uh, look from the bottom of the bone, so, uh, let, let's say. So here you can see the growth speed at each point of the epiphyseal plate. And, with, and the result uh, is that due to asymmetrical loading, there is a fasted, fa fastest uh, growth on this side than on this side. And this gives rise to an angular devi deviation. So for research purposes, we can compute this, this kind of things and uh, use it to, to investigate the effect of different uh, working part, patterns, for example. So what we were interested in was uh, in computing the effect of an orthotic device. Essentially, the orthotics, uh, actually it's an orthosis, uh, exerts a set of forces on the patient's leg these forces can be reduced to, a, an, to an elastic support, a force and a torque uh, acting on, on, the, on the joint. So we can now compute the stress distribution. This is the femoral cartilage, and these are the stresses, uh, the contact stresses computed after due to these loads, and, ev uh, and ev evaluate the effect of the magnitude of the load exerted by this orth orthotic device on, on growth. For this, again, we reduce the problem to the femur and we look at the growth speed of the, the epiphyseal plate. Here on the left, you can see the growth speed of the, on the epiphyseal plate. We can see a reduction of the growth on the left side at the, and an increase on the growth speed on the right side. And this causes an angular deviation of the bone, as you can see on this image here, uh, of about two degrees after three months. What we found is that this angular deviation is in the order of the half with, 
we could achieve with an uh, MEP physiologic treatment. So this is the kind of results we were looking for. Uh, finally, a typical problem uh, when uh, a person undergoes a hip replacement, a hip replacement surgery, a titanium, a, a titanium prosthetic, prosthetic is inserted in the bone. This prosthetic takes a load from the bone, so the bony tissue in in some regions is not stimulated to maintain its density. When this happens, the the prosthetic finally, at, at least, it, it ends up uh, losing. So we can compute that after with the software, essentially we have forces due to the heat reaction and the gluteus, for example, and this causes, and, and we can compute the asymptotic density distribution in the bone. Here you can see in the, in the right, this blue air area, of, on, I'm pointing at here, that represents stress shielding. Here the bone weakens, and we can analyze if that uh, is gonna lead to a failure of the, of the treatment. So in conclusion, I don't want to take more time than the one I was given, but we did a custom function to solve bone growth, a remote problem. We chose a default phenomenolo phenomenological model, but this can be easily changed. Uh, we obtained a significant com com computational cost reduction as compared to other algorithms. And this is the part as engineers were interested in. This code was validated, so we can trust the best to, to our best knowledge, the results we obtained. And it gives us a foundation for solving several practical interest problems, which are solved in the literature sometimes, but there is no validated, until now, there was no validated uh, code behind. So we can study orthopedic devices interaction with growth. We can study the effect of some biomechanical patterns on growth or the effect of orthotic external devices or custom made orthotic orthotics. With 3D printing, we can no, now do um, 3D printed uh, hip orthotic orthotics. So this could be interesting to have uh, to optimize those designs. Uh, and finally, all this code has been published. So we want to have an open source uh, database to for these kind of problems in order to have better results. Uh, I hope I have no surpassed the time. So thanks for your attention. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak here. I, and I'm open to questions if you have any. Thank you, uh, Marcelo. Hello. Do you take a uh, French question or only English? Uh, je peux essayer. Malheureusement, je ne sais pas si proficient en français. OK, we try. Des questions dans la salle? Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. But my question is about your study computation. Which boundary condition using in your model? Because the there are deeper sensory in this boundary condition. Uh, I don't know which model you, you are interested in, but uh, for example, this one, yes. there are several <laughs> situations. So this is a quick overview, but there are several. This is the the modeling in the knee, it could be a, a separated talk because this is a quite a complex problem. Here we have a set of forces acting on the, on the joint. These forces are obtained as, after a clinical trial. For this case, we used uh, published data. So uh, these forces were not measured by us, but essentially we have the tibia here, I'm pointing at here, this is fixed. We have a contact condition here. We used a symmetrical contact condition with no, with no, uh, with no 
friction. Sure. Luckily for, for us, the, the cartilage is one of the materials in the nature that, that has the lowest friction coefficient ever. So uh, that's good for simulation purposes. Uh, we have a set of structures like the ligaments and the, and the knee tendon, which are modeled as a 1D beam, uh, non-linear. These beams in traction uh, can take force, but in compression, they do not. So this was modeled with PASAPA. We used a, a trick in which we used a thermal model. So we define a, a temperature associated with the deformation in, on, in the ligaments and the tendon. And when temperature was less than zero, a uh, young modulus of these beams was set to zero. So they, don't, they do not take load in compression, but they do in traction. Uh, there are several other details because this is a three degree uh, uh, of freedom uh, joint. So we had to use an augment, augmented rigidity method in order to have conver convergent uh, simulations. So I'm, I'm not quite sure what, what kind of, 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 of problem you are interested in, but uh, essentially we have, when we go to this problem, we take for each of the loading states, we take the nodal forces we obtained with the contact model and we project them onto, in, into this model. And this gives us the loading states for the growth uh, resolution. I hope I, I've answered. Sorry, for loading, you include the effect, the dynamic effect, but all the static effects. It's all static here because uh, it's actually qu quite a slow, uh, Inertial terms are neg neg negligible here. Uh, perhaps in a fracture case when, or in a car accident or something like that, we should use a dynamical uh, problem uh, formulation here. But this is quasi-static, let's, let's say. Thank you, Ron. You're welcome. Another question? Just a small question. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, did mm -hmm. you, I didn't notice if you perform your computation in large displacement analysis or just in small displacements. And if you I'm, try I'm to, to, to compute in large displacement analysis, because I suppose that between the bones, the, the, the formations or even the, the rotation of certain uh, uh, are, are, are more important. You mean here, this is a large displacement simulation because the, the, actually there are small deformations but large displacements in, the, in this case. That, that, that was a question. Just to, to know what was the, the hypothesis. If, if you compute the, the solution in large displacement or, or either in a small displacement analysis. No, no this is in large, large displacements. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Y a-t-il d'autres questions? Okay. Thank you, Marcelo. Thank you very much. You're welcome.